Most churches cannot and could not answer those white baby boomers' question, who am I? And the reason they could not answer it is because they've never studied the lineage of this man that the Bible speaks of as Abraham. So I want to tell you some about the Bible story of Abraham. First of all, I want you to understand that Abraham is not just an Old Testament story. The story of Abraham is in every book of the Bible, 66 of them, from Genesis forward. In fact, in the book of Luke, we read about Abraham. Abraham is mentioned 69 times in the New Testament alone. And in Luke chapter 1, we find that the coming of Jesus Christ had something to do with this man, Abraham. In Luke chapter 1, we read about the father of John the Baptist. His name was Zacharias. The scripture tells us here in Luke chapter 1 that he was filled full of the Holy Spirit. And he began to prophesy about the events of the day and about the things that were happening that surrounded the coming of Christ. I read to you in verse 67 and 68, quote, And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. Now, let's just drop on down to a few verses, and we'll find that the coming of Christ had something to do with a promise made to Abraham. Notice as I read verse 72, quote, To show mercy toward our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father. In the quote. Imagine that. The coming of Christ had something to do with this man Abraham, who lived way back beyond the Caucasus Mountains in an area called the Ur of Chaldees. Well, if we want to fully understand even the coming of Christ, then we need to understand, we need to know the oath that was made with Abraham. And to do that, all we have to do is turn to the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 17, we read about the oath that was made to Abraham. I'll read it to you, starting with verse 1 from the New American Standard Translation. Quote, Now when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Of nations, and I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come forth from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. Now, let's just analyze exactly what was in that oath, that promise made to Abraham. We're going to bring up on the screen and just look at the various points. First of all, Abraham was to father a multitude of nations. The second point was the promise was to follow his seed. Third, the promise was to be an everlasting promise. Now, those are just three points. There's more. And we'll cover more of the promises in a moment. But for now, let's just keep in mind those three points. It was to be an everlasting covenant. A multitude of nations were to come from the loins of Abraham. And it was to follow. This covenant was to follow his seed. Now, Abraham, according to the Bible, had several sons. But we read just a few verses later in Genesis 17, the prophecy that he made concerning his son Isaac. Listen as I read. But God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. End of quote. 
Now, we understand then that this covenant, this promise that was made with Abraham, went next to his son Isaac. The Bible tells us that God tested Abraham. He tested him with a supreme test of faith, asking him to offer his only begotten son Isaac. Abraham met the test, and we're told that because he was faithful, even to the point of offering his only begotten son, because he was faithful, God made another promise to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 22, verses 16 through 18, we are told of the promise concerning Abraham. There he says, and you see it on the screen, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing, and, I have not, and have not withheld your son, your only son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. Well, Isaac, of course, lived. And Isaac then, he had a son by the name of Jacob. The Bible tells us he had two sons, actually, Esau and Jacob. But Jacob was the one that received the promise, the promise that had went from Abraham to Isaac. And now we're told in Scripture that it went to Jacob. This promise, this covenant was reaffirmed to Jacob in Genesis chapter 28, verse 14. And this is what God said there in that verse. He said that his seed shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall the families of the earth be blessed. Now, as I said, there's more. Let's analyze what we now have learned about this covenant. We know that the covenant went from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob. And here are the points we find about the covenant now. Number one... The seed was going to be a multitude of seeds as the stars of the heavens and the sand of the seashore. There were going to be many nations formed from the seed of Abraham. We know that they were going to spread in all directions, north, south, east, and west. And they were to be a blessing to all. And that the covenant that was made was to be an everlasting covenant. I want to emphasize point number four that we showed on the screen because it needs to be emphasized. It's part of God's plan. He said that the descendants of the covenant made with Abraham and Isaac were to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Yes, they were to form a multitude of people like the stars of the heavens and the sand of the sea. And yes, they were to form even a multitude of nations, if you will. Yes, it was to be an everlasting covenant that would pass on to their descendants after them. But it was for the purpose of being a blessing to all the families of the earth. Well, let's go back to Jacob. Abraham fathered Isaac. Isaac fathered Jacob. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 32 that Jacob had an occasion and had a night experience to wrestle with an angelic being. And because of his wrestling with this angelic being, we're told in Genesis 32 that his name was changed to Israel. So it's now Jacob Israel who fathered 12 sons. Actually, he fathered 12 sons and one daughter. But those 12 sons, in turn, fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible tells us that those people ended up in a land called Egypt. When Jacob was old, according to the Bible story, while he was living in Egypt, he called his sons before him to bestow upon them the prophetic family blessings. And so Jacob called each son, but of Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, there was a special blessing, a birthright blessing, if you will, that he wanted to bestow upon them. Ephraim and Manasseh were the two sons of Joseph. And the Bible tells us that when he went to bestow those blessings, that he crossed his hands and placed his right hand on the younger son. And Manasseh was told by Jacob, or Israel, that he would become a great nation and Ephraim a company of nations. Now, according to the Bible story, after Jacob died, there arose in Egypt a pharaoh who...